Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Gary Berry Stadium for Be The Light Colorado, episode number five. We are super excited that you've joined us again tonight uh, as we turn on the lights here at Gary Berry Stadium to remind the kids of Colorado Springs School District 11 that we still miss you, we're still thinking about you, and we want to make sure that we stay connected. Um, we have uh, four more guests with us tonight. We brought the team from Doherty High School, so we're excited to have the Spartans with us. And our first guest tonight is one of our newer board members, uh, Director Parth Mel uh, Melpacum. And uh, you were elected in November and uh, immediately thrown into the fire of a pandemic. How does uh, being a school board member in the middle of a pandemic when on the job less than a year, how does that work out? Uh, how's, it, how's it going for you? Thank you, Chris. It's so good to be here under the lights for this installment of Be The Light Colorado. I'm so glad to see all of you guys, and I hope all our students, staff, and families are healthy and safe. So to get back to your question, you are right. I've been on the board for less than four months now, around four months, and uh, not in my wildest dreams would I ever have imagined anything like this happening, where we end up closing our schools two months early and transitioning into a distance learning platform. As a new board member, you go to various orientation programs, orientation classes. Not one of them was about a pandemic <laughs> or how to prepare for a pandemic. Uh, uh, so we are all learning. Uh, these are unprecedented times for our district leadership, our teachers, our staff, our students especially. I have a child at home, and just like every other child, she is missing her teachers. She's missing her friends at school, the normalcy and the routine that comes with our school environment. All our students are missing that, and I really feel for our students, especially our seniors, who are going through some difficult times now, adjusting to the postponements, uh, maybe cancellations, and altered plans for their end of the year milestone events. Um, so. Um, our seniors have worked really hard, and my heart goes out to them. And for our students and our community, we hear you, we see you, we care about you. And we are going to honor our students as best as possible while balancing the health and our safety of our overall community. But even during these concerns and worries, Chris, I see some good things happening, some silver linings, some positives happening. I see our community coming together, bonding, leaning on each other, caring about each other, and supporting each other getting through these difficult times. I see our district leadership spending countless hours getting our distance learning program up and running. I see our principals reaching out, making those phone calls to our parents, to our students, not only supporting them, inspiring them, but also being there for them as a comfort. Our teachers are doing the same thing, meeting our emotional, social emotional needs of our kids, as well as their academic needs. And our students, I see our students craving to come back into our school buildings and to uh, some semblance of normalcy. So Chris, when you started this program five weeks back, you had a challenge I did. for our students. And next week is National Teacher Appreciation Week. So I want to challenge our community, our parents, our students, to reach out to our teachers, show that you care for them, show that you appreciate them. Normally, we would be getting together as a school community, doing special things for our teachers. But we can do something even in this virtual environment. All it requires is an email, a phone call, a sign at the yard, uh, some form of method where you can connect to your teachers and show them, our counselors too, show them that you appreciate them. Thank awesome. you, Chris. Awesome. Thank you, and, and, and District 11, we do challenge you. We challenge you to reach out to our teachers next week uh, and our counselors and those folks. They've, they have been working their tails off. You know, our, our folks go to, to uh, college and they learn a, a certain way of doing life and, 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 and a certain way of, of teaching and uh, preparing for students and those kind of things. And, and as you guys all know, March 13th-ish, we, we, we uh, were baptized into a new normal in terms of the distance learning. So our, our teachers of D11, we sure do appreciate you. D11, there's a lot of folks behind the scenes that make District 11 roll, and we're happy to have our Deputy Superintendent, uh, Chief, Inf uh, Chief Financial Officer, Glenn Gustafson with us. Uh, proud Doherty uh, alum, 1978. Uh, he's a Spartan. 
but uh, even more than than being a Spartan, he's he's a D11 guy. Uh, been here a long time, and you've seen us District 11 in our best uh, when things are going wonderful and fantastic and and no concerns. This has got to be something new for you, and, and you've seen a lot with District 11. Tell me just a little bit how how do we go about what what happens to to take care of our kids? What's what's on your heart tonight in terms of the kids of D11? Well, thanks, Chris, for having us. This has been a really tough time in D11, and yet I'm proud that we have kept our staff on the payroll. So we still have bus drivers and teacher assistants and teachers, and everybody's getting paid. And I'm very proud of that. We have people behind the scenes going in to make sure that payroll runs, that we're paying all of our vendors, our construction contractors, all those people in this community that depend on District 11 to support their family we're continuing to pay them to make them happen, to make that happen for them. It's been a really challenging time, but everybody has pitched in. They're working remotely. Very few people go into the office just on a rare occasion to do one or two things, but everybody's doing what they can to make it successful for kids. What I'm most excited about is now that we've transitioned from the stay-at-home order to distance learning, how we've adapted as an organization to be able to provide services for kids so instruction can continue for all of our families in District 11. And it took a lot of behind the scenes things to make that happen. And yet we want to provide that instruction, make sure that kids still have an opportunity to learn and grow as we close out this year on a high, strong note. And I think the hidden benefit of all this is when this is all said and over, we'll be better for it. We'll have better technology, we'll have better tools, will be more adept, and in the end, I think District 11 will be stronger, and I think the kids that are struggling through this time will be stronger too. Awesome. Well, I, I, I want to say thank you. You you do so much for our district, and, and I think I said it either last week or the week before. I don't remember when it was, but there are so many people, so many people behind the scenes that are making all of this stuff just happen for our folks and, and supporting our kids and supporting our teachers and and our ESP staff and and there are just so many people out there that we tip we tip our hat to you and we just say thank you um, so thank you for that um, Sparta is Gary Berry turned into Sparta tonight um, and 1990 five, five. Uh, Stephanie Leisure the athletic director of Doherty High School um, also a 1995 graduate of Doherty High School um, anywhere Doherty goes it's known as Sparta and so tell me a little bit about you guys have a phrase over there we before me we before me inside of Sparta but you can't really be inside of Sparta because you got to stay home what's happening we before me in Sparta right now okay Uh, so isn't it interesting the messaging actually surrounding everything since March 13th has surrounded we especially as things got progressively worse and we still are unsure of where we are in that whole respect regarding this entire pandemic. The messaging has been surrounding people thinking of others before themselves. So to make sure that we're taking the taking the needs of others um, higher than our own priorities. Um, and th- that's really been the message on TV, on the radio, um, when you're talking to when you're talking to really anybody on the street and m- yes, there might be some differences of, of opinion, but overall the the major message is to be selfless and not selfish um, and so in that sense I mean what we feel fortunate with is that Doherty's really like we've we've embodied that and tried to pursue it for years now um, we're not perfect of course but uh, we have tried to work towards we before me and all that we do and particularly in the athletic department uh, we've worked really hard what we've worked with coaches on and what by extension we wanted to go to our kids that there's a maturity that comes with thinking of others before yourself Um, particularly right our senior athletes for gracious sakes they are missing uh, they're missing everything everything that's fun about their senior year like there's parts at the beginning that are fun because you're a senior but this is the time march last half of march and april is the fun time and then of course may when you get to graduation at the end Um, so they're missing everything and we have worked with our senior athletes in particular to have them like try to understand the realization that they are missing things not because because it's not anything that they can control 
Um, so they're, they're trying to make the best of that situation. They're trying to encourage others. I'm so proud of my coaches and then the staff at Doherty High School for how they've responded to this and how they're trying to take care of kids. Uh, they're reaching out consistently, whether it's through small daily challenges, playing paper, rock, scissors wars on WebEx, um, having guest, guest speakers on WebEx, um, paper plates or signs that are dropped off in the middle of the night and the kid wakes up the next morning to see that they've that that someone values them and loves them and i think then it spreads to our students i was speaking to a teacher today and she said you know what steph i can't i can't tell you how many kids have emailed me to check on me to see how i'm doing how my well-being is and to me that's the direct translation of us trying as spartans to be more we before me um, it's not easy and it's, this is still going to be tough. The rest of May is going to be tough, but we're going to try to pursue it to the best of our abilities and we're going to, and we're going to continue to try to honor one another and care about one another despite the distance. Awesome. Thank you. And thanks for being we before me at Doherty High School. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we challenged you guys five weeks ago and there was a, a small handful of high schools across the state of Colorado that turned the lights on to, uh, to send the, the message of hope to our kids uh, throughout the state of Colorado. The next thing you know, we've got over 80 schools doing it. And, um, you know, we didn't start it. It was the Colorado High School Activities Association that it was their idea and it just sort of spread like wildfire. But I um, have to share with you on my way over to the stadium tonight. Uh, drove by Widener Field, home of the uh, Car Spring Switchbacks Football Club, uh, professional soccer team, and their lights were on, and we knew that they were going to be on sooner or later. Um, so we continue to see this spread. And so, uh, speaking of soccer, we're here with Doherty's head girl soccer coach, uh, Coach Craig Decker. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Coach Decker does a lot of work with UCCS and the web page and all that technology. You're the technology guy. And you're the cool technology guy because you do the graphics and all the fun stuff. Um, so you're doing some pretty cool stuff with your team. And, and we've seen you out there on social media doing some different things. Share with us what you're doing to ultimately stay connected with kids. Uh, well, our girls, I mean, of course, it's soccer. So they had to do the, uh, the toilet paper juggle, you know, where they juggle it back and forth. That was really fun. Um, you know, it, it's hard to... It's just hard right now. So our motto, like Steph was saying, our, our motto for the season is find a way. So at the beginning of the season, it was find a way to perform on the field in the classroom. And now we can't really do that. Um, so now we have to find a way to still be a team. You know, just because we're not playing doesn't mean we're not a team anymore. We still meet weekly. Um, we've brought in some guest speakers. We brought in a nutritionist, a professional player. Um, just to motivate the girls because they're in the same exact boat we are. They're sitting around. They don't know if there's going to be a season. We obviously know now, but at then we didn't know. Um, we brought in motivational speakers. Uh, we have a big and little sister thing going where we have an upperclassman that kind of takes an underclassman under their wing. And, you know, I throw out four to five questions a week. Hey, what's their favorite movie? What are they binging? And then also some serious stuff, you know, what, what's their pain points right now, you know, what, what are they struggling with, um, and just things like that. And it's been good to see the girls weekly. I wish I could see them more in person on here on the field, um, but, but it's what we got. And we're going to do a virtual signing with a couple of the girls, so that's, that's great. And, uh, yeah, it's been really good. Good. Well, thank you. And thank you for what you're doing. And... Um, you guys will remember that it was five weeks ago we, we challenged our, our staff. Um, we challenged everybody in District 11 to reach out and connect. And it's, it's been tough times. And, and I have to share with you uh, something that I saw today out on social media. And it comes from one of your seniors at Doherty High School. And it says, I've quickly learned that I'm a small fish in a vast ocean, says Blake Weigel of Doherty High School in Carter Springs when prompted. Um, you recognize that this virus and its effects on society are way bigger than just about yourself. Your class are all the seniors across the nation. You can't be selfish and only think of yourself and all that you're missing out on because it's for the greater good of society. That's an important thing to recognize for all of us. And I, I just, the, the maturity of that statement, um, we are in a position where we're safer at home. And as I was driving over here, I, I saw so many folks that were in violation of what 
they're asking us to do. And, and so I'm just going to ask you and, and remind the kids of District 11 and anybody that's out there watching, uh, follow the guidelines, please, with the safer at home. Um, it is not fun being in this empty stadium every single Monday night because that's not what this stadium is built for. Um, this stadium was built for kids to compete um, and to learn life lessons. And so we're going to ask that you continue to, uh, to look at the uh, guidelines with Safer at Home and, and follow those. So when we get back in the fall, uh, we can be back together like you talked about on the fields, in the pools, on the courts, uh, back where, we, where, we, uh, where we're supposed to be. So our challenge five weeks ago was make those phone calls, make those phone calls, make those phone calls. And I want to make sure that you guys realize that phones work two different ways. Um, we have been uh, reminded lately um, that we have some folks that during these tough times and isolation and those kind of things that we have people out there struggling. And Dr. Thomas did a great job our first week talking about all of the resources that are out there for people. Um, and you know what? If you're out there struggling and if, if, you're, if you need help and you need assistance and the isolation is getting to you and those kind of things, we're asking you to pick up your phone and make that phone call. Um, pick up, you know, get on the website, find one of our schools. We will get you in contact with the right people. We've got counselors. We've got all sorts of resources throughout the great city of Colorado Springs. Uh, we want you to reach out. So we're going to reach out and keep making those phone calls. But if you need help, uh, please don't hesitate. Pick up that phone call somebody and just say, hey, I need some help. Uh, we are all in this together. I know a lot of our media channels are saying that, but um, at the end of the day, we are truly all in this together. So we've got teacher uh, appreciation next week. I believe one of our board members has challenged you, District 11. Let's make sure that all of our teachers get that email, get that phone call, just that simple thank you. It doesn't need to be a book. Two or three sentences on what you appreciate from our teachers, it'll go a long way. Um, as we prepare for uh, the closing of our show, we want to remind you guys, District 11 kids, at the end of the day, we miss you, we love you, and we promise we will stay connected.